What is up, everybody? Solomon here. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic Wednesday. First and foremost, I really wanted to just tell everybody how much it really meant uh, for those of you that reached out uh, on Twitter, uh, direct messages. You know, a, a lot of the some of the patrons um, or patrons that I have on Patreon reached out. I posted something a couple of days ago about some family stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's much appreciated. Uh, going to try to start dialing it back. Um, not really too much for myself, but kind of just not going overboard um, and trying to really keep my eye on the prize as far as what's really important. Uh, you know, this stuff is certainly important to me, uh, but, you know, family comes first. Uh, but I, you know, we have got a lot of this stuff handled at this point, at least in the interim, uh, and just keeping an eye on stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. And, um, Again, thank you. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I've got to get through all of the direct messages still. I've replied to a lot, but I, I appreciate it. Okay, moving forward. Um, if you see any scam ads on this video, don't participate in those. Now, we're going to, on this video, uh, talk about uh, a gigantic piece of news coming through for you know the first true federal bank charter issued um, in the crypto industry uh, via the OCC. We are also going to dive into some very interesting connections uh, between Saudi uh, Central Bank, uh, their open banking charter, as well as Hedera Hashgraph. And they have had a ton of news over the past few days that, that ties directly into the government of Bahrain, as well as some other really interesting uh, initiatives. And uh, Ripple actually ties into one of them as well. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. So this is in a first for the crypto industry. Visa-backed Anchorage gets a federal bank charter. Wow. That is a hell of a goatee. Um, all right. A startup called Anchorage announced on Wednesday uh, that it has become the first cryptocurrency company to receive a federal charter from, charter from the office of the comptroller of the currency. Now, I'm not going to go through this entire thing here. But this is a gigantic leap forward uh, for the digital asset industry. And this is certainly not going to be the last quote unquote startup uh, that receives a federal charter from the OCC uh, to operate um, essentially above. Now, from my understanding and looking at this in the past, because the OCC was trying to do this in the past, um, this essentially brings uh, this this federal charter basically brings this anchorage makes them a bank and it makes them a federally chartered bank, essentially bypassing state regulations, uh, making them a national institution. So this is gigantic. C feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm not going to read through the whole thing. One of the things that I'm trying to do now, uh, especially after the stuff this week, is kind of get through these videos a little bit quicker here and just give you guys insight as far as what's happening. You can do the deep dives a little bit more so, though. All right. Now, I saw this two days ago. Saudi Central Bank issues open banking policy. Uh, this is SAMA, the Saudi Central Bank, pre uh, previously known as Saudi Arabian Monetary Agency, has issued the open banking policy listing the objectives and benefits of it for the local financial sector. Now, this go-live date for the open banking initiative through the Saudi Central Bank is in the first half of 2022. For the next 12 months, they're going to work on the design of the open banking uh, ecosystem and its implementation which would also include quote unquote testing within the financial ecosystem players. If you're not aware, this is old news. Two years ago, February 15, 2018, three years ago, actually almost now, uh, Saudi's central bank signs blockchain deal with Ripple. Uh, this is out of Dubai. This news was reported. Saudi Arabian central bank has signed a deal with US-based Ripple to help banks in the kingdom settle payments using blockchain software as Gulf regulators begin to explore new forms of financial technology. This pilot program was the first of its kind, et cetera, et cetera. Just interesting finding these connections here. Now, I saw this right before I made the video, and I have not done any sort of a deep dive into this flow blockchain, but my understanding is that the developers of this, and they're going to have a flow token, essentially were the, uh, the originating developers of CryptoKitties. Uh, so we can see the T-Mobile symbol, symbol there. We know T-Mobile. Uh, T-Systems MMS, a subsidiary of the largest telecommunications provider in Europe, uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, announced today a partnership with Flow Blockchain developed by Dapper Labs, a company behind CryptoKitties and NBA Topshop. T-Systems' flagship deployment on Flow will be the operation of an execution node. 
Validation Capital was involved in this partnership as a strategic advisor. Okay, so they're running a note on, an, on the network. Certainly, we can see flow right here. Um, market data is untracked. It's an untracked listing. Now, I looked on some of the other coin websites as well. I didn't see that it was live yet. I've never looked into flow before. Uh, flow token distribution right here. What I found interesting uh, is that the presale, uh, they announced this auction uh, in October, uh, October 7, 2020. Um, the, the closing price was at four times uh, the price of community sale. So I'm gonna be paying attention a little bit more to this. I'll probably do a little bit more of a deep dive into this on something like Patreon. Uh, but they they have some partners. Uh, I don't know, I'm not gonna be able to find them on here. Go to the Flow website and find their partners. I think it's NBA they're partnered with, a couple of other, you know, obviously pretty big um, organizations. So if you wanna check that out, feel free to. All right, I wanted to hop into this because this ties into Ripple. Uh, during this presentation, uh, but this is more of a little bit of a deep dive on some of the news that I've found over the past couple days with Hashgraph. Uh, I just found this randomly. Uh, this is a system for validating uh, a pending incident-related data records in a distributed electronic ledger. This is assigned to Motorola. Uh, this is currently a pending application. This is from late 2020, September, and then again in December. Uh, they do directly, they directly mention Hashgraph or Hashgraph, and other embodiments, a Hashgraph may be used, which uses a gossip protocol, which obviously, from my understanding, um, Hedera's consensus method is, is a patented technology uh, via Swirls, which is the parent company of Hedera Hashgraph. So they're directly talking about this gossip protocol to propagate information related to doing da data records, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna get overly crazy into this or bore you guys, but you know, essentially they mentioned Hashgraph and a Motorola Solutions patent. It's a pending patent. Uh, if you wanna look into that, you certainly can. Uh, this is US patent number 2020004021931 alpha one. Moving forward. This is also more recent. Highland and Hedera Hashgraph present blockchain proof of concept for records verification to Texas Texas Secretary of State. Uh, State. I'm sure many of you may have seen this, um, but this is Highland and Hedera Hashgraph. So it looks like a joint operation in presenting uh, presenting this uh, solution to the Texas Secretary of State. Uh, if you're not aware, Highland more than two uh, half of 2019's Fortune 100 companies leverage Highland products and solutions. You can check out Highland a little bit more if you want to. Again, trying to get through this. Uh, I'm trying to make this like 13 to 15 minutes instead of like 20. Uh, AVC Global, this came out also, leading supply chain company. And this is like where this deep dive actually goes. Uh, AVC Global selects Hedera Hashgraph as a distributed ledger technology platform. This is a really kind of a weird announcement through AVC Global because they've already been partnered with Hashgraph. Um, Hedera Consensus Service will be integrated with AVC Global and its Subsidiary, MVC, which I believe is Medical Value Chain's track and trace platform for pharmaceutical supply chain compliance. This was just on January 12, 2021. So I'm gonna take you through this a little bit here. So keep in mind, Medical Value Chain, we're gonna talk about Kyriba. Ripple actually comes up in this. Um, and then AVC is actually tied into some big government initiatives in Bahrain, as well as some other organizations that kind of make you uh, raise a brow. So this is AVC Global again. So not just medical value chain, but this is Smart Hub. Uh, Smart Hub through AVC Global fully delivers on all elements of the AVC Global technology stack. Uh, now they're integrated it with Hyperledger, uh, for FinTech for supply chain finance and cross-border payments, all on an immutable Hyperledger blockchain with audible consensus and governance that is powered by Hedera Hashgraph. Uh, so obviously, We've got a tie-in between Hyperledger. We've got a tie-in with Hedera Hashgraph. Uh, this smart hub, um, their consensus is governed and powered by Hashgraph, Hedera Hashgraph. So now we're gonna move forward here. This is Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, NHRA selects MVC, which is a medical value chain, to help improve the safety of the medicine supply chain for its citizens. This is August 15th, 2020. There's always a timeline to these things as well. This is the National Health Regulatory Authority. The National Health Regulatory Authority. And then we can go through here. I found an article posted uh, talking about <laughs> when working for a national government, AVC and MVC, medical value chain, needed <laughs> to le leverage a network with transparent governance. The Hedera network is governed by a growing group of largely 
Uh, large, highly respected enterprises and institutions, including Avery, Denison, huge, Boeing, huge, Denton's huge, Deutsche Telekom, huge. We talked about them earlier. Uh, DLA Piper, one of the largest law firms in the world. FIS, uh, which is Fe- Fidelity Information Services, uh, aka WorldPay. I believe they consumed WorldPay. Google, IBM, LG. I mean, Hedera's giant. Nomura's big. Swirls is the parent company. Tata Communications is a monster. Wipro, Zane. Zane comes up again, but I don't know if it's going to be shown in this. Uh, but yeah, this is AVC Global's partners, okay? These are their, their actual, just their strate- strategic partners here. These are their solutions, obviously. Blockchain certified track and trace. We know Smart Hub um, is basically governed and the consensus runs on Hedera. And uh, we know that MVC is Hedera Hashgraph as well. So RFXL, Kyriba, which is a giant, Hedera Hashgraph, and MVC, which is Medical Value Chain, which is partnered with Hedera Hashgraph as well. But Kyriba has this active liquidity network, which I found, which essentially um, provides solution for the GCC um, region. Uh, liquidity, liqu- what is that? Like a, an open liquidity network solution. So I'm gonna dive a little bit more into that here, okay? This is, before we get into that, Riata Group, okay? Partners with AVC Global to create an African ag- agricultural supply blockchain company. Riata Group. AVC only has like four partners. I only see one other partner that deals in distributed ledger technology that AVC deals with besides Hyperledger. So maybe it's Hyperledger, um, but Hashgraph is not blockchain. But Riata Group ties into this medical value chain as, as well. It's really weird how they kind of announce this stuff and then go through it. So this is African a- agricultural supply. Uh, this is what this, this is trying to enable here through Riata Group and AVC. We just saw AVC. Riata Group has extremely close ties. Bahrain's medical value chain now has supply chain finance solutions for the GCC. Uh, GCC is the Gulf Cooperation Council, uh, essentially a political and economic alliance of six Middle Eastern countries such as Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, the UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, and Oman. But the supply chain finance solution is via Kyriba through AVC, just like Hashgraph, just like MVC. Um, and this is talking about the Kyriba working capital solution powered by Kyriba's active liquidity network is being fully integrated into the MVC value chain platform. So we already saw the distributed ledger technology company that's going to be integrated into the MVC platform is Hedera Hashgraph, right? By a Hashgraph technology. Now, let me see here if it has, yeah. This is just weird, like how this stuff shakes out. Background information on the key players. Um, Sheik, uh, I'm going to mispronounce her name, a member of the Bahraini royal family, a prominent GCC entrepreneur who has built a, rep, a rep, reputed uh, conglomerate with over 22 countries, blah, blah, blah. As a visionary entrepreneur, Her Highness uh, formed the Riata Group and focused on non-traditional Gulf Cooperation Council markets. She formed the Riata Group. Riata Group, which we just saw partnered with AVC for a African agricultural supply chain uh, via blockchain. Um, but I would be uh, hopefully not remiss in saying via Hashgraph uh, and then via, um, obviously we've got Hyperledger as well. Uh, just a little bit of speculation here. I'm not saying that any of this is certain, but it's really interesting to see how all these things tie together. Uh, I went to this and the, you know they, they deleted this from the medical value chain web, website, but this essentially uh, tied that Riata group in as well. Uh, if you go to Riata Group's website, they deal in oil and gas, construction, finance and investment, consulting, telecommunications, recruit, recruiting. And this is like one of those weird websites where you know that it's big, but they're, you can't find a lot on here. Um, it's not like a shell organization or anything like that, but there's certainly more here. This is like probably a government initiative, in my opinion. Uh, we know that we just saw that Her Highness essentially was one of the, the royal family, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll see where this goes. Uh, Kyriba, Active Liquidity Network. Kyriba, the global leader in liquidity solutions, today announced a partnership. This is June 14th, 2020. So this is all shaking out within like the past six months, all these little different uh, technology integrations. And Kyriba is a monster. So this is certainly a little bit more speculative, okay? Uh, But this is in the EMEA region. What is this? Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, Midas Group. And this is talking about this Active Liquidity Network. Again, all centralized. This alliance will enable delivery delivery of localized services and support in these regions. Blah blah blah. Uh, via cloud-based active liquidity network. 
uh, try to get through the rest of this. Midas Group is, is big. Um, Midas Group, 50 years experience, 70 plus countries ac uh, across Middle East. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Middle East, Europe, and Africa. Uh, EMEA markets. So World Economic Forum recognition, diversity, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Kyriba. This is their, these are their customers, okay? Yeah, they're customers. Uh, interestingly enough, Ripple is a Kyriba customer. Uh, I don't see any other, I don't see any other blockchain companies on here whatsoever. That looks like a polka dot thing. Peloton. Uh, I'm gonna have to look that up. Uh, everything else, I mean, these are some, some big names on here, obviously. EA is a big, Bridgestone, I mean, BBC. Um, but yeah, Amway. Um, so their active liquidity network, it's right on this same page, activate liquidity. Um, so yeah, Ripple was Kyriba. And then if you go into their clients, uh, I, I, you can run the gambit with their clients. They're gigantic. Deloitte, Swift, uh, Capgemini's giant. Um, I think Grant Thornton's big. Anyways, you guys get the picture, right? Can see Swift. Um, all these like things kind of oddly tying together. Now, last but not least, Intesa San Paolo. You can certainly find more on this active liquidity network. Intesa San Paolo uh, strengthens its supply chain with finance program with an innovative dynamic discounting service now available to businesses thanks to the agreement with Kyriba. Active liquidity network once again. Uh, <laughs> Kyriba's partnership with Intesa San Paolo opens new opportunities to serve uh, chief financial officers and treasury leaders worldwide with active liquidity management solutions. So that's certainly active liquidity network. Interestingly enough, Intesa San Paolo um, trialed XRP, I believe it was through Corda, uh, among a few other institutions a couple of years ago. And they also trialed GPI, I believe. They may be signed on to GPI, if I'm not mistaken. All right, last but not least on this, uh, I posted... Some of you may know, some of you may not know. I I try to post when I can other coins to Patreon. I did a really big sweep back in November, and you know, hopefully this stuff calms down for me soon in the near future, and I can um, do another big sweep. This is a price update for all the coins that I, that either I actually did it, not like just a post on Patreon about news, but I actually did like somewhat of a deep dive on and chose to do it on. A couple that I chose to do that the, some of the patrons requested, uh, as well as the actual sweep that I did at the very beginning of November. Uh, this is just a price update. This is all in plus or minus return uh, in ROI. So essentially, if you have two dollars going to four dollars, I'm not putting a 200% return. I'm just or or two x. I'm just putting 100% return. So Cross Network, November 16th, four dollars and eleven cents. Right now, four four dollars and forty two cents. Barnbridge, 2104. Current, 2668. These are November 16th ones. Luxo, 76 cents, now $1.87. None of this is financial advice whatsoever. Uh, Origin Protocol, and I'm still actually watching Origin. They're tied into some other initiatives that I like that have done well for me, um, that I kind of believe in also. Origin Protocol is down 17% since I posted November 16th. Kusama, uh, up 107% since November 16th when I posted. Bella Protocol, down 20%. Alpha Finance Lab, uh, this is all an ROI, 214% positive. Smart credit down 30%. Octo FI up 96%. Uh, Frontier up 100%. Keeper 3 uh, RV1 up 120%. I did an Icon deep dive November 25th. I'm actually interested in Icon 2. Um, up 30%. Har Harmony was a patron requested one. 6, uh, 0 0.006 cents up 20% since then. That was November 30th. Singularity up 33%. Ramp, which actually somebody requested me to do a deep dive on Ramp. And then I, it led me into finding Alliance Block, uh, which I did a double deep dive on December 7th, but shout out to, I forget who it was, um, had me request, uh, you know, looking into ramp. December 7th, um, 0 0.07, so seven cents. Now it's a 26 cents, 276% return on investment. Uh, Alliance Block, uh, which is what I did the deep dive on the same day, uh, six cents, 37 cents now, 462% return on investment. Uh, I did one on Cody and Alchemy Pay, and Cody is actually really interesting too. Alchemy Pay is interesting also. Uh, 59 cents for Cody, now it's 53 cents, minus 10%. Uh, you get the picture. Alchemy's down 25%. Go Chain's up 2% since I posted. Polka started, I, I actually posted that I bought a couple of coins. 
uh, which I rarely ever do, um, just because I don't want people following what I do because I want them to do their own due diligence, um, due diligence, uh, due diligence in their research. Uh, Polka Starter, though, I try to get into anything that I can in the Polkadot ecosystem that actually seems legit. Polka Starter was an interesting project to me just because it's essentially like Kickstarter, uh, but via the Polka, um, the Polka Dot ecosystem. So you know what Kickstarter is? It's like crowdfunding, right? Um, 216% since I posted December 23rd. Spider Dow is another Polka Dot uh, ecosystem project, down 37%. So nothing is certain in this space. Uh, Marlin Pond, which is very much so um, one of the founders of Zillica, uh, down 10%. Luckily, it was down like worse than 10% for a while there. It's just started to come back. And API 3, which everybody's talked about. I know I've talked to Darren about API 3. Essentially, it's like the first, uh, a first layer um, bypass for oracles, um, in my understanding at least, which is big because essentially to, to tie into these oracle networks, like uh, you have uh, you have Chainlink uh, and all these different things right now, um, you essentially have to go through like a, a subsidiary, which kind of... Um, eliminates a little bit of the utility. At least that's my understanding of it. And API 3 was one that I've been meaning to get. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and again, thank you guys so much. Uh, all of you, ladies, gentlemen, however you identify, you know, whatever. Um, my family supports, uh, or my, my family greatly, greatly appreciates the support. Um, and, you know, it's it takes a lot of time to make these videos. I'm trying to do it in a more concise manner so it doesn't take as much time away. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, I just, I really appreciate it. My wife really appreciate it, pre appreciates it. My family um, really appreciates it. And, you know, it means the world to me. I've been in this community for a while. So I love all of you guys. Um, thank you guys very much. And uh, I will see you tomorrow if there's news to present. Later.